welcome. Thank you for joining us. It's Wednesday, April 24th. You're watching News 2 on VIA Channel 4 and 504. I'm Leslie Kamis Young. Topping our stories tonight, Carnival is in full swing and on St. Thomas at the Roy Lester Snyder Hospital. They joined in the Carnival Fund with its celebration. Some of the patients and staff at the hospital were unable to attend and go to the carnival festivities, celebrations, and so the celebrations came to them. News 2's James Gardner has more. 30 years is a long time, but that's how long the annual carnival celebration at the Roy L. Snyder Hospital has been going on. This event, which was sponsored by Kmart, is put on for the patients, hospital staff, their families and seniors from various nursing homes that can't make it to the parade route to enjoy the sights and sounds on parade day. Kevin Rodriguez, public relations for the Carnival Committee, was the MC and started the program with a moment of silence for three icons of the Virgin Islands, Irvin Brownie Brown, Helen Gabriel of the Sebastian Majorettes, and Dixie Jarvis from Stanley and the Ten Sleepless Nights. Then the governor addressed the crowd. And I just want to say you're going to be seeing a lot of me for Carnival because nothing I like more than the fact. You don't like the fact? It don't sound like you're ready for a party. But I guess this is just a warm up, so by, I guess by later on, we'll be seeing more and more activity. I would just like to give a special greeting to our seniors who are here with us today and all the patients at our, our Roy Lester Schneider Hospital. Uh, we wish you well and hope that you have a speedy recovery, but just a little cheer for Carnival and a little joy, a little jump up today. So thank you all for coming out and those of you who did um, to support. Then Stanley and the Sleepless Nights played for the crowd. which was followed by a mini parade. For News 2, this is James Gardner. That looks like it was a great time. We just want to make a quick correction. The band in the clip was Milos Kings and Mr. Jarvis, and my condolences go out to his family, was a sound engineer pop for the popular band, The Imaginations. There will be no horse racing during this year's carnival. The Clinton Phipps racetrack on St. Thomas is still not conducive for racing, but that could change in a couple of years. The Federal Emergency Management Agency recently announced a grant of $4.1 million to reconstruct and harden the St. Thomas racetrack. The racetrack suffered under a Hurricane Irma in 2017 when torrential flooding and storm surge and hurricane winds forced substantial damage to various components of the track, including the exterior lighting system, bandstand roof, main stable, starting gate, bleachers, restroom facilities, as well as materials that are needed to maintain the surface of the sand, the track, excuse me, composed of sand and clay, they were all washed away. The Clinton Phipps racetrack will be funded under Section 428 of the Stafford Relief and Emergency Assistant Act, which authorizes alternative procedures for the public assistance program. The work on this facility is scheduled to begin in early 2020. It is estimated to take up to two years to complete. 
Turning our attention to crime on St. Thomas, a man was arrested for a vehicular crash that claimed one life. On Monday, April 22nd, officers responded to an auto collision on Long Bay Road, just past the former pump station where road construction is currently ongoing. A female passenger and male passenger were traveling west in a red Nissan sedan. The other vehicle, a silver Toyota Yaris, was traveling east and collided with the red at Nissan. One of the occupants in the Toyota Yaris succumbed to his injuries on the scene. The occupants in both vehicles were all treated for their injuries and released at the Roy Lester Schneider Medical Center. The driver of the Toyota Yaris was identified as 29-year-old Benvenido Gomez Morales. He was arrested at 7 a.m. the same morning after being discharged from the emergency room. He was charged with vehicular homicide, negligent driving, and failing to stay as far left as practical. Bail was set at $25,000 by order of the courts. Unable to post bail, he remained. He was remanded. Excuse me to the Bureau of Corrections. The deceased 21-year-old Gilberto Baez Salas was identified by next of kin. This accident is currently under investigations by the Traffic Bureau Division of the Virgin Islands PD. Also on St. Thomas, a man was arrested and charged with stealing jewelry worth $9,000 after the woman he allegedly stole from recognized the jewelry in public. The actual robbery occurred on Friday, January 25th. The victim told police 15 pieces of her jewelry were removed from her residence in Estate Friedenhoy. Three months later, on Monday, April 22nd, the victim said she was at the Virgin Haven Bar and Restaurant ordering some food when she saw the suspect, Corsic Aaron, wearing some of the jewelry that was removed from her residence. The victim called police, who brought Aaron to Adam Command, where the jewelry was identified by the victim as her stolen jewelry. 43-year-old Corsic Aaron was arrested for grand larceny and possession of stolen property, booked and processed. Mr. Aaron's bail was set at $25,000. Unable to post bail, he turned over. He was turned over to the Bureau of Corrections pending his advice of right hearing. Coming up next, a preview of the upcoming ReFest plus highlights from Carnival Cultural Day when we come back. Welcome back. The seventh annual Virgin Islands Caribbean Culture Center held its annual symposium last week. The VICCC is under the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at the University of the Virgin Islands and produces and develops programs, conferences, workshops, as well as cultural heritage resources. This year's symposium was entitled Culture, Creatives, and STEAM. The center's director and symposium guests spoke about this year's event. Here's more. We have had a host of different convenings, many centered around the 7th Annual VICCC Symposium and our guests here, our illustrious guests provided keynote presentations which covered a number of areas around culture, creatives, and STEAMs. Um, I'm visiting in protected time from the University of the West Indies and have had the opportunity to really feed into my global African research trod where I'm looking at the educational experiences of Africans in the diaspora and it has been a huge process, huge, huge process. So um, I'm hoping to come back but this global African research trod has been amazing. Culture is everything you do mm. and drama is music just like in any other genre of music which has a certain energy of itself. But the difference between the drums and just regular music usually has a little more to do with the spirit that's involved in it and the energy that's created and the energy that's used when you're drumming. So that speaks to the whole thing of dealing with your spirit, the spirit of your family, your ancestors, and communicating using that, that voice. Every 
year, the Virgin Islands Marine Advisory Service, in partnership with various organizations, brings the community together for the annual Reef Fest event. The goal is to bring awareness about the marine environment surrounding the territory and how residents' actions impact its health. This year, the annual Reef Fest will be held this Saturday, April 27th, at the Yacht Haven Grand on St. Thomas. Howard Forbes stopped by the studio to tell us all about what folks can expect from this Saturday's event. Um, the idea behind Reef Fest is we want to educate and raise awareness about our local uh, natural resources to the general public, um, especially with the fact that we now have this stony coral tissue loss disease. So we want to make sure that we highlight that disease and try and provide opportunities but education to the general public so they understand what the disease is and what the university and our partners are doing to better address the disease in the territory. The theme just, it, get, it carries over from year to year. Okay. Um, it's from land to sea. Okay. So we want to get people to understand that what you do on land has the propensity to affect the ocean environment even if you don't live directly next to the coastline. There's a lot of stuff happening, um, mm -hmm. but primarily one of the bigger things that we'll have this year is a sustainable seafood showdown. So we are inviting a lot of different restaurants through the Virgin Islands Clean Coast Initiative program. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have restaurants and other businesses preparing their take on lionfish. Okay. So we want to be able to get people to understand that although lionfish is an invasive species, it doesn't belong here, but it is something that we can promote as a sustainable seafood source. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. On Wednesday, residents participated in Denim Day, wearing an article of denim, denim clothing to show support for sexual assault victims who have been blamed for wearing certain types of clothing when they were attacked. In the territory, there are few nonprofit organizations who do the most help the most to help victims of crimes involving sexual assault. One of their strongest advocates, former Family Resource Center Executive Director Vivian St. Just, said nonprofits continue to lack all the resources they need to combat this type of crime and help its, victim, its victims. Here's more. Quick answer is no. Uh, to extend that a little bit, uh, nonprofits depend on private support, local funding, uh, and many of the local entities are, for example, our legislature is dependent on monies coming in from some federal grants and so on. There are a lot of uh, grants that I know of that are not um, being accessed that would be of support to our territory, which would then be um, a conduit to provide support for nonprofit agencies that are on the ground doing the work of domestic violence and sexual assault. Uh, this is April. It is Sexual Assault Awareness Month nationally. And, it, you know, that's, I, I guess, our main focus. Um, but there are a lot of resources that are not being um, brought to the territory and therefore um, aren't being provided to agencies and therefore victims of crime or uh, to be used for prevention. Carnival events continue on St. Thomas. Today was Cultural Day at Emancipation Garden. News 2 was there to bring you the sights and sounds. There was certainly plenty to see and enjoy earlier today that not only entertained, but highlighted the unique aspects of Virgin Islands culture. There was music and dancing and proud displays of traditional garb. Cultural Day is not to be confused with Cultural Fair, more commonly known as the Food Fair. That event is slated for Wednesday, May. May 1st, also at Emancipation Garden. We'll be sure to bring you the highlights from that as well. Stick around, News 2 AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Good evening. It's a dry afternoon and evening here across the Virgin Islands, and that's going to continue to be the case into tomorrow. As we take you into your current satellite across the uh, 
the Caribbean into the Atlantic, not a whole bunch going on for us specifically, but as you move to the north, there's a weak boundary. We'll continue to watch a system come out of the United States that will eventually press its way into the Atlantic, and that will disrupt our trade winds as we head into your extended forecast. Before we get ahead of ourselves here, once again, it's dry out there. We're noticing some clouds coming across the region. Moisture is going to be limited, so tonight mainly clear with a low of 74. As we move into tomorrow, lots of sunshine in St. John with a high of 85, topping off in the mid mid 80s as well for St. Thomas. Dry conditions extending in towards St. Croix with a high of 87. So overall, if you plan to be outdoors, it's going to be a great day to do some gardening. Not going to be worried too much in terms of precipitation. Now, as far as our marine forecast goes, we are currently under small craft use caution. As we head into tomorrow, waves are going to be 3 to 5 feet on the Atlantic side. Winds out of the east 5 to 10 knots. On the Caribbean side, those waves still running 3 to 5 feet, but winds out of the east 10 to 15, so a bit more brisk. Small craft use caution as well for the Caribbean side. That just means stay aware, especially if you plan to be like on a jet ski or something like that uh, for tonight. And even as we continue to tomorrow, got to keep an eye on that marine forecast. Now, in terms of precipitation, we'll see a tad bit more of that into your Friday afternoon. Uh, trades will continue to pick back up for your weekend for Saturday and Sunday with some showers and spots. As you notice, your temperature is not budging too much remaining in the upper 80s for the next several days and for your lows in the upper 70s. So for the rest of today into your Thursday, looking at dry conditions, and then we'll be returning to some shower chances as we head into your Friday afternoon. Thank you for that. Coming up next, News to Sports with Gary Anthony, plus Alex Randall's news and comments when we come back. watching News 2. This is Alex Randall with News and Comment. We had Easter this past week. Hundreds of people pitched tents on the usual beaches on St. Croix. It's a tradition. More than 50 years. Some families have been Easter camping for decades. But it's not your grandfather's pup tent anymore. Some of the tents have furniture, television sets, refrigerator stoves. The Next Generation Network set up free Wi-Fi communication at Kramer's Park. As you don't want to go Easter camping without Facebook or Instagram. On St. Thomas, the annual Easter egg hunt was high flying. Impacting your world, Christian ministries had something really different. The Easter Bunny came by helicopter. It swooped in over the university's golf course, dropping Easter eggs on the lawn and landed so kids could snap selfies in the helicopter cockpit. The Easter Bunny as a whirly bird? Now, does our government really have the right to collect an excise tax on things we import, but not collect that same tax on things made here? Is this a barrier to local manufacturers? Are we shooting ourselves in the foot taxing things we import and not taxing things made here? It's just making things more expensive? And does our government really have the right to impose an excise tax when U.S. Congress is supposed to be in charge of all interstate commerce? This was a hotly debated topic before the local district court, and the decision has not come down yet. Emil Griffith Park reopened. Good news on St. Thomas. The park and the playground were devastated in the 2017 hurricanes, and here come Carnival Corporation that led the way, joined by the Community Foundation, Sports Parks and Recreation, the Department of Tourism, and many local businesses who paid to rebuild the park. New flooring, new activities, new places to hold parties, and it looks fabulous. Here comes horse racing. The racetrack may get back on St. Thomas after all. Federal Emergency Management Agency announced a $4.1 million payment for construction work at the Clinton Phipps racetrack on St. Thomas. That racetrack took a beating in the hurricanes. The lighting, the bandstand, the stage, the starting gates, the bleachers, the restrooms, all damaged. Work supposed to start in 2020 and take two years to complete. Demand is up. The Department of Tourism says the airlines were happy this winter. Lots of travelers, full planes. The airlines like full planes. Uh, Joe Bashulta held talks with the airlines. He says they are planning to increase capacity, even more flights this summer. 
the United Airlines planning a daily nonstop out of Houston, and American Airlines planning flights from Chicago, Dallas, Miami, and more out of their Charlotte hub. They say as more hotels open, they will add more flights. Carnival's in full swing. We have a Carnival Queen. This year's competition was held at the University of Virgin Islands Sports and Fitness Center. All air-conditioned and comfortable. This year there were four contestants. Kimora Lynn Blackett was contestant number one. She was first runner-up in Miss Intellect. She's also the daughter of our very own TV2, Shalimar Poole. Contestant number two, Shanisha Reimer James. She won Miss Congeniality. She had the best interview. Third contestant was Shalaya Mathurin. She won Miss Cooperative. And our queen is Essence Watley, who took home the title of Carnival Queen, Miss Photogenic, People's Choice, Best Swimsuit, Best Lady of Yesteryear, Best Talent, and Best Evening Wear. Carnival is continuing. The Toddlers Derby and the traditional games happened. Carnival is approaching its crescendo. We had Carnival at the hospital show. The Fort Christian parking lot rides are ready to go. The booths are in place. The Callaloo is simmering for food fair. And the official village opening coming up on Friday. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Randall with news and comment. Now back to Leslie. Thanks for that, Alex. Gary has some sports highlights for us, and let me tell you, I know they're going to be good because NBA action is heating up. Did you see that three-pointer by Damian Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers last night? Unbelievable. Never saw a game end like that. Gary, what do you have for us tonight? I'm Gary Anthony, and this is News 2 Sports. If you've ever picked up a basketball, we've all done this. Clock running down, three, two, one. He shoots and scores, game over. And that's what happened in the NBA playoff action last night. Game five, Portland Trail Blazers versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. Blazers looking to close out the series of three games to one, and it was the Damian Lillard show. Lillard hit from everywhere, inside, outside, and upside down to the tune of 50 points. With the score tied and the clock ticking down, Lillard from way deep and splash. Game over, series over, and the Blazers move on in the NBA playoffs. Over in Denver, the Nuggets took a 3-2 series lead with a 108-90 stomping over the San Antonio Spurs. The Nuggets started strong and were up by as many as 30 points in this Game 5 matchup, and the Nuggets looked to close out the Spurs Thursday in San Antonio. Up in Toronto, the Raptors closed out their series four games to one with a 115-96 mauling over the Orlando Magic. The Raptors led by as many as 37 points. Toronto will face the Philadelphia 76ers in the Eastern Conference semifinals after the Sixers put on a massive gonging on the Brooklyn Nets 122-100 and the game wasn't even that close. The Sixers were up by as many as 39 points, winning four straight and the series four games to one. And finally, I want to wish my mom a happy birthday. That's it for sports. Leslie, back to you. Thank you for that, Gary. And that's it for our show tonight. We're live on Facebook and YouTube and on via Channel 4 and 504. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Make sure you stay tuned to News 2. We'll have highlights from various carnival events as well as our annual live coverage of the adults and children's parades. Follow us on social media. Tag us on any stories you want to see on the news or send us a message on Messenger. You can also email us at newsdirector at tv 2 Thanks again for joining us on News 2. I'm Leslie Comision. We'll see you next time.